I want to start today's evaluation exercise with this end game position. Now, in the 10 day chess challenge, I don't focus too much on the end game, not because the end game isn't important, but because it's so different to the opening and the middle game. And actually, the end game should be studied separately. The reason for that is that the principles in the end game are quite a bit different than what they are in the opening and in the middle game. For example, the king safety aspect is not important in the end game because there aren't pieces that can exploit your king or there are much fewer pieces so you don't have to worry about king safety nearly as much as you would in the opening and in the middle game and also center control is not as important in the end game as in the opening and middle game notice i don't say those things aren't at important at all anymore i just say it's not as important anymore and as a matter of fact in the end game your five step evaluation process actually becomes a three step evaluation process and the three step evaluation process in the end game is to first of all still material that's always important compare material and second step you're going to compare piece development and thirdly you're going to compare pawn structure with pawn structure i mean not only if your pawns are connected or disconnected but also if you have any past pawns or the possibility to create a past pawn Okay, so that said, use the three-step evaluation process for the end game and say, who do you think has an advantage in this position? You can pause the video to think about it. Okay, so uh, in terms of material, white is a pawn ahead, so that's good. In terms of piece development, we can at this point say maybe the white pieces are slightly better developed, but it's not significant. And in terms of Pawn structure, we can say that uh, white has an advantage also. Since he has two pawns, these pawns can help to protect each other, whereas this pawn is isolated, he has to be defended by the rook. Okay, so in this position, there are a number of ways for white to win, but I'm going to show the way that will help you understand an important endgame principle. And the move rook f1 wins a piece. What I mean by win a piece? Well, you actually win the king because the king can't join the action anymore. He can't cross the f-file. And white will now be able to focus the attention on this side of the board with his king and pawns. And black will be forced to defend with his rook alone because his king can't join the, join the action. Let's say, for example, um, just want to show you what happens. We put pressure on the pawn and once... Okay, maybe black wouldn't play that. Maybe we'll try to be a bit more stubborn, play the king there rather, but still we add more pressure on the pawn. And uh, we're going to win the pawn now. We could also, if we wanted, instead of playing the king there, we could now play the rook to e1, and if the king comes closer, we can still win the, the pawn on e6 this way. Okay, so the main point I wanted to illustrate in this example is uh, that piece activity is also important in the end game specifically so with the kings and if you can cut your opponent's king off from the action then uh, that is uh, to your advantage so just quickly to recap in the end game your thinking process evaluation process becomes a three-step process you evaluate material you evaluate piece development and you evaluate pawn structure and with pawn structure you specifically look for opportunities to attack your opponent's pawns or for ways that you can create a past pawn okay so that's the first exercise let's move on to the next one okay in this position it's white's turn to move who do you think has an advantage here use your evaluation thinking method and then say what do you think you can pause the video to think about it okay so even though material is equal in this position we can say that uh, white has an advantage in terms of his better piece development and also with his safer king. You can see all the white pieces are developed and the rook can come to e1 quickly. Compare that to the black rooks that are still in the corners, the king that hasn't castled yet and the bishop that still hasn't moved yet. Okay, so I'm going to suggest two moves here. The move pawn to e5 or the move pawn takes d5 think about your evaluation 
criteria and then say which move do you think is better. Okay, so let's look at this move first of all. And probably black will play the knight back to d7. Now we have to ask ourselves, in what way did white manage to improve his position here? Well, I think we have to admit that white didn't really improve his position all that much. And uh, as a matter of fact, he helped black make his king a little safer. The reason I say he made his king a little safer is the e-file has become closed now. It's very difficult for white to open up the e-file. For example, he can't play e6 now because uh, he's just helping black now. Let's compare that to the move e takes d5 which opens up the e-file and uh, since the black king is exposed we want to expose the king safety factor as much as possible. Okay so if uh, black takes our rook, have you seen that he can capture our rook? Well we can now start adding the pressure on black by playing rook to e1 check. If he plays a move like Bishop e7, you can see how we add pressure on the king. Now we're threatening bishop takes queen and we're also threatening bishop takes e7. Or in this position, if uh, if uh, the king goes to d8, then we can take the bishop and now we're threatening pawn takes c6. And black king stays in all sorts of trouble. You see the move pawn takes d5 is much more to the point. Because we expose the white king or uh, the black king as much as possible, which is white's main advantage in this position. So we, we we should try to utilize it as much as possible. Now, one interesting point in a position like this, you are actually playing with ten points extra material. Why do I say that? Well, the rooks in the corners have a value of ten points in material, but they don't participate. So that means for as long as we can keep this king under pressure, we will play with a lot of extra material. And that's why it's important to try open up the center as quickly as possible and put the king under as much pressure as possible for as long as possible. And at the same time, don't give him time to develop the rooks in the corners. Because then you'll be playing with a material advantage for as long as you can prevent black from developing those pieces. Okay, so that was the end of today's exercise. I'll see you again tomorrow. Cheers.